the light bill? Care programs offer help so you can stay in the light. To see if you qualify, visit comed.com backslash care or call 888-806-CARE. Broadcasting all over the world at urbanbroadcastmedia.com. Delivering love and inspiration 24-7. This is UBM Praise. Worried about paying your light bill? Care programs offer help so you can stay in the light. To see if you qualify, visit comed.com backslash care or call 888-806-CARE. Comed presents the power of staying in the light. Having trouble juggling all your bills? Are you worried about the lights getting turned off? ComEd Care programs can help you keep the lights on. Care programs offer help to those facing financial hardships. All inquiries are confidential. To see if you qualify, visit ComEd.com slash care or call 1-888-806-CARE. ComEd. Powering lives. Grant amounts may vary while funds are available. Let's go. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? The Sir Walter Jones Show, co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in where we tackle all the hot topics in a believer's walk. Wednesday is Music Business Night. We feature new and old artists. We talk about the music ministry in churches, choirs, musicians, music directors, etc. And we talk about publishing, record deals, ASCAP, etc. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Whose show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Back everybody, welcome back everybody. This is Sir Walter, the Sir Walter Jones Show. We've got a full room here. We're about to do some something here that you don't usually hear on radio. <laughs> we're about to construct uh, construct something. If you just tuned in, we were talking about the musician and their skills and or the lack thereof. Uh, we try to give you the idea of the understanding of what talent is, opposed to what a a gift is. Uh, one thing I will say, and I and I think uh, Penel Johnson kind of nailed it right right before we went under the break. Uh, about the selfishness uh, of a musician and and and, and uh, Calvin Bridges co- continue to bring home that they were not praying tr- trained properly uh, and uh, yeah and I think it's a it's a wonderful point and I think it's, it's the foundation of where the problems are they're not trained but I will say that I do notice I have noticed that in many churches today there are only one musician left so he's doing his part and the bass guitar part yeah. and the lead guitar part and all these parts so he's soloing a lot I fi- yes and I find myself doing it because I get called from a lot of these pastors out there there's a lot right. of churches out there that, that have no musicians and then the other churches got five, six, seven musicians and they're all waiting on a chance to play the church across the street have nobody sometimes they only got one so now he's got to fill in all this stuff so what it did was it caused him He's he's got a problem now. When he sits in with a band, he's got to really cause himself to be more disciplined, which is hard for him because now a bass a a B three organ player he turns on the bass draw bars, Mm -hmm. the bass guitar is on his right. All right now he playing the bass as well as the chords and the bass player is like why sound so muddy? This what's what's going on? What's going on? Yeah yeah. So so Alvin, you're an organ player. Yes. Okay. What should happen here with the with the organ player? Because sometimes, and this is me being an organ player, I actually find I can I can play better rhythmically if my foot is playing the bass. But sometimes I have to mute the bass, but I'm still playing with my foot because I'm so used to doing that for so many years being by myself. I can, I play better. You have to reprogram your thinking. Mm-hmm. There's a difference in playing the organ by yourself or you and the drummer yeah. for a service than it is when you're the organist in a band. Right. You have to know your role. You're no longer a foundational player when it's a band. Mm-hmm. You then become color or accent. You have to change your draw bar settings. That's true. You have to change your seating positioning because a lot of times you're not sitting in the middle. Middle C is not here no more. You, 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 you have to know when you're in, when you're out. Mm-hmm. You have to have an, a, a tuned ear to listen to what the piano player is playing, not always matching, but complimenting, yeah. voicing under or over him because your job changes. It's a different. It's just a, it's, it's a different role, mm-hmm. and a lot of these young musicians know either 
or mm-hmm. and they don't hear it. I grew up in an era where I heard it. Right. I heard it. Um, Richard Gibbs was a master of it. Sure. Uh, uh, Shelby Wills, a master of it. They knew their roles, even though yeah. those were two different genres right. of gospel music playing. Uh-huh. I mean, just to use those as a as an example. But yeah. yet, going even further back, the mm-hmm. late great Nash Schaefer, uh-huh. in his r- arena, he knew how to work an organ by yes. himself yes. or with the band. Or with the band, even though it may have been time. traditional style, yeah. his sound changes. Mm-hmm. Your organ changes. Mm-hmm. Well, everything that you said about each of those m- musicians that you learned, the particular thing that you said, and, and something that I hope that y- you find a place to do a whole show on, mm-hmm. and that is accompanying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. It's a big difference between accompanying yes. and playing solo and being and, and, and being a featured artist uh-huh. on whatever instrument that it is. Absolutely. Right. And in the church, it's it's a totally it's almost a lost art. Yes, right. I agree. And and it and it hurts me so so badly because in church if you don't hear the words if you don't understand the words if there's not a cohesion to the music ministry then it's basically noise That's good. and I'm it fucking... doesn't minister to the audience yeah. it doesn't prepare the people to hear the word right because right. it's a music show or music confusion I whatever find it that the music and it right. doesn't set up the word right. to be received and if you don't do that then we as minstrels as psalmists as musicians we haven't fulfilled the purpose of the worship service mm. now musical is something else mm-hmm. being featured in something else is some, but but that again that and what music is appropriate too that's another subtopic for a show yeah. for what services right. wow yeah, I, I I love that statement because today when you walk in churches now, these awesomely talented young people, and I can't say all of them can't play hymns because some of them have learned the melody lines, mm-hmm. but they use so many embellishments yep. and so many different chord progressions. I love fat chords and as they call them drops now, mm-hmm. but it's to a point now that it's distracting to the song. Mm-hmm. And distracting to the singer. And now the singers are trying to sing with all of that. Yes. And nobody sings a straight song anymore. That's true. Good. If I can interject, it's like with the musicians that are coming up, and even with some of the older ones, I dare to say, take church out of it. Learn a song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The song have parts. Yeah. Like you were talking about earlier, like an intro, he preaching, huh? um, a chorus, mm-hmm. a verse, mm-hmm. a bridge, mm-hmm. and a vamp, <laughs> and the <an> ending, <laughs> and, and, the introduction, and the hook, and three the reprise. And you close. But <laughs> the most important thing in that song, the most important thing that'll make or break the song, or make or break a singer, make or break a musician, is the transitions in between those parts. Yeah. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So if a musician can learn instead of jamming every section, Mm -hmm. but actually learn a part, Mm -hmm. you know, not, you know, far as dynamics, how long you should hold or how short you should hold it. If if the verse is a boom, 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 just play that. Well, just learn the song. That's so important if you learn the song. If you learn the song, then you have a much better perception of yeah. what to embellish and yeah. where. That's One thing right. I if did. If you learn the song, right. but if you don't, if you only learn the embellishments and you, you don't really know right. the song, you just solo on, yeah. You ready. know, I, I, I think, and this happens to that happened to me when I was younger, and it was like some people, some cats don't know the process of learning a song. Just like I broke the song down, mm-hmm. I think a lot of mus- musicians that if you're listening to this. The best way to learn a song is to break it in parts. 90% of the songs is an intro, verse, Mm -hmm. chorus, Mm -hmm. bridge, vamp. Mm -hmm. Now, it can go in various orders, but that's the parts. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn those parts, and then when you learn the parts, go back to the song and identify what the transitions is between each of those parts. Mm -hmm. The more you do it, the quicker you can do it. And the more you can retain because you're breaking the song because the song can look like a mile long, but when you break it down, it's only like an inch long. That's yeah. so beautiful. I mean, like, man, just listening to you say this and, and, and to speak this, is there any venue, is there any forum where musicians can go and learn this? Right. We can Church make one now. Let's start it now. 
You know, <laughs> right. We let's set up a workshop. It just I, started right I, here. I, I have <laughs> and to, we can all take a segment. I have to, um, what's his name? Uh, Sheree. Sheree Reed. Mm-hmm. Sheree Reed. Sheree Reed. Uh, uh, and I got to give it to this brother. Mm-hmm. You know, another another young, like a lo- young brother to me. Yeah. He he has a forum and 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 I've went a couple of times. The musicians, what is it? The, the Chicago Chicago's musicians. musicians, yeah. musicians Guild. Said it. Say it again. Chicago, Chicago musicians, musicians Guild. Guild. Mm-hmm. And Sheree Reed and he goes into this and he he's he's he, he, Sheree is very brilliant. Yeah. When it comes to music, he's not just a bass player. Absolutely. Yeah. And and yeah. when it comes to music, you always say this. You got to get in where you fit in, mm-hmm. and and that that's that's just a saying that we used to throw out there, but it's very applicable in music, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Last night I was having this 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 discussion with Cedric Ware, a sound mm-hmm. guy, mm-hmm. and I said this: I wish that every singer sat in a studio and watched a song get mixed, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. Because when I have to mix a record mm-hmm. or mix a song, mm-hmm. you will hear if mm-hmm. s- you will hear so much stuff that has to be stripped away, like Pernell was saying, yes. that it won't fit. Right. Those transitions right. are not working. Mm-hmm. And and when you sing once, it's done. Right. But when it's recorded, it is heard over and over and over. Yeah. So when you play live, you should play like it's a recording. Absolutely. Right, yeah. and so it's it's in, in in mixing. It's all about frequencies. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I tell any you know people ask me, well, how do you produce and how do you learn uh, how to EQ? I always say, you learn how to master a kick drum. If you learn how to EQ a kick drum, mm-hmm. you will learn a lot about okay. frequencies. Yeah, because it's such a low frequency. Yeah. And it's so difficult. Right. You would mm-hmm. think it's something else. Oh, that's true. But it's so difficult to EQ and sit mm-hmm. in the mix mm-hmm. in the exact right place. Mm-hmm. Because right. you got bass in that low frequency. You mm-hmm. got kick in that low frequency. And it, it it's a lot of work. And mm-hmm. you also have trouble in it because mm-hmm. attack. I like to hear exactly. this. Attack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Not exactly. just the boom. Right. That's, that's good. Not just that's the good. you And I the think punch. we should do a show on, 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 the, on the engineering part. Yeah. Of the music ministry, yeah. uh, uh, the pro- to producing most on, on that because the producer uh, needs to know all the aspects. He should be a good engineer as well Absolutely. as uh, you know knowing what the musicians do. Audrey, you, you're sitting here looking very pretty. Okay, <laughs> now you're yeah. a singer and you're singing choirs and groups. Mm-hmm. What are some of the flaws you've noticed that may have caused you not to be able to get into your part because of what the musicians were doing, maybe at the intro, maybe in the middle? What are some things you think the musician can improve on to help you as a singer? Actually, I would just uh, agree with all of you. If the musician is too busy, yeah. it's just confusing. Yeah. And it can take away from the spirit of God, the move of God, and the direction that, for me, I'm I'm going in as a worship leader to lead his people into a place of worship and mm-hmm. To, to be at his feet, it can like throw the whole spirit oh, off. Yeah. If you hear a drum going off into a solo or the <laughs> piano was coming up too loud. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing worse than being at a venue and the music is so loud that you can't even hear yourself. Mm. Um, it, yeah. Tweaking um, the sound guy, tweaking things, it does, you are too loud. Sure. Turn you down. Yeah. You know, so that is, <laughs> um, so it's, it's <laughs> knowing the song Turn is you number down. one, right. but right. you need to turn down <laughs> but unfortunately that. that's yeah. almost the case at everything that I attend yeah including yeah. Sunday morning service yeah I agree I don't understand the need for the sound to be mixed like it's a stadium sure. and the church don't hold but a hundred people yeah that's oh true it's that's true I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. And then the other side of that, and I don't say this to be uh, uh, arrogant or anything like that, but having had the opportunity and the blessing in life for people who will come and pay fifty, sixty, seventy dollars mm-hmm. for a concert for a little black man from Chicago who they ain't never seen before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they don't want me. They don't want to sound too loud because they will sit up there in the concert and do this. Wow. You've seen the panel. They yeah. will sit up in the concert and do this, and they don't care about how much you run and right. all of those other things and, and all your tricks. Yeah. They want you to be able to sing and yeah. to minister to them yeah. and to feed them something, give them something that they don't get every day, that they don't get everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. that's the simplicity of what your message is and the sincerity of what comes from your heart. 
Wow. That's what's going to reach them. That's good. Not how loud it is. Right. Yeah. But, right. Uh-huh. That's one of the differences I see when I sing at Reggie's Music Joint. Mm-hmm. You know, singing before those people is totally different mm-hmm. than singing in the church.